again for the third lecture session on hydrology and water sources engineering course. My name is Malikarjuna Yaharemat, Professor of Civil Engineering Department in KIT's College of Engineering, Kuala Lumpur. In today's session, I am going to discuss analysis of rainfall data that is estimation of missing rainfall data by arithmetical mean method, Thiessen's polygon method, isoetyl method and also we will discuss what is mass rainfall curve and intensity duration curve. Estimation of missing rainfall data. The reasons for estimating the missing rainfall data of a particular NGAS network. When absence of observer, second reason is instrument failure, or third reason is relocation of the station. In such cases, if any one of the rain gauge data is missing, we can estimate that missing rainfall data. There are two methods are there to estimate the missing rain gas rainfall data. First one is arithmetic mean method, second one is normal ratio method. First we will see when we will use the arithmetic mean method. If the normal annual precipitation at the adjacent station under consideration is within 10 percentage of the normal annual rainfall of that station under consideration, then the missing rainfall data can be easily estimated by arithmetic average of rainfall at that adjacent station. Here we can see the formula P x equal to 1 by n, P 1 plus P 2 plus P 3 plus P n. Here P x represents precipitation at the missing location, P 1 to P n represents precipitation at the n surrounding rain gauge stations and n is the number of total rain gauge stations. Normal ratio method, this is the second method of estimating missing rainfall data. Normal ratio method, in this case, when the nearby rain gauge station consideration is more than 10 percentage, in this such cases, this normal ratio method is used and this is the formula to find out the Px, Px is stands for rain gauge station where data is missing and n is the number of rain gauges P1, P2, P3 are the particular precipitation at particular rain gauges and n1, n2 enter the rain gauge locations. See, we can explain this by taking one numerical example. <coughs> the normal annual rainfall at stations A, B, C and D in a given catchment basins are 80, 97, 67, 59, comma, 76.28 and 92.0 respectively. In the year 1975, the station T was inoperative and stations ABC recorded annual precipitation of 91.11, 79.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11, 91.11,
72.23 and 79.89 cm respectively. Estimate the rainfall at station T. As the normal rainfall values vary more than 10 percentage, the normal ratio method is adopted in this case. P at D in 1925 is given by the formula N D by 3, P A by N A, P B by N B, P C by N C. P A is 19.11 centimeter, P B is 72.23 centimeter and P C is 17.89 centimeters. And N A is 80.97 nb is 67.59 centimeters nc is 76 centimeters and nd is 92.101 centimeters therefore by using this formula pd is calculated as 91.41 centimeters next analysis of rainfall data arithmetic mean method the simplest of all the arithmetic mean methods which takes an average of all rainfall depths. See in image you can see the area where four rain gauge stations are located A, B, C and D. The average in rainfall of each station, station at station A is 15, at B is 12 and C is 8 and D is 5. The simplest method is average of all these four rainfall data that is 15 plus 12 plus 8 plus 5 and divided by 4 gives the average of 10 mm rainfall. This is the simplest arithmetic mean method. Next we will see Tizen's polygon method. This method is first proposed by Tizen in the year. 1911 considers the representative areas for each polygon. Tizen's polygon, this method divides the area using Tizen's polygons with the assumption that rainfall is homogeneous within the coverage area of each station. This method is also called an area weightage average. These assumptions are fine for low lying flat terrain, but not suitable for mountainous terrain. In this method, see you can see how to create business polygon. See, we can see here rainbow stations A, B, C, D, E, F are there in step number 1. What we need to do is, we need to join all the stations making triangles. This is second step. In step 3 is, we have to bisect sides of all the triangles, bisect sides of all the triangles so that they will meet at a particular point, thus making number of polygons. That is why polygons are created. Just by one taking one numerical example, you can see here. In this four rain stations are given A, B, C, D, E and areas of each polygon given in kilometer square area and precipitation in all the four stations are also given and by using the formula p average summation of area into precipitation divided by the summation of area. Here you can add all the areas of each polygons that comes to 40 plus 45 plus 30 plus 43 summation will be 193. Similarly, area into precipitation 40 into 30.8 will give you 
1232 kilometers square mm similarly 45 and 33.4 1503 similarly 38.34 and 6 1314 like this summation of area into precipitation is 6085.6 so the summation of area into precipitation divided by summation of area will give you the average precipitation over that particular area that is 31.53 mm this is how to calculate the rainfall by Thiessen's polynomial method next we will move to third one analysis of rainfall data using isoheitel method isoheit it is line joining points of equal rainfall magnitude the catchment area is drawn to scale and the rainfall stations are marked on it the recorded rainfall values for which aerial average is to be determined are marked at the respective stations the neighboring stations outside the catchment are also considered taking point rainfall values as the guide isoids of different rainfall values are drawn the area between adjacent isoids is measured using a planimeter if isoids go out of the catchment the catchment boundary is used as the bounding line it is assumed that the average value of rainfall indicated by two isoids acts over the inter isoidal area this method is considered superior to the previous methods when the number of rainfall stations are large see you can see the area where isoheads are drawn you can see the isoheads of points stations a b c d e f line 4 4 indicates one isoheid of rainfall magnitude 4 next 6 6 of rainfall magnitude 7.2 like this isoheids are marked see see here in this image you can see the one area of four rain cost stations each precipitation is measured as 15 12 8 and 5 you can also see the iso heads and area between area 1 40 km square area 2 80 km square area 3 70 km square and area 4 50 km square is given and area into precipitation here you can see the first area See here, the total area comes around 240 km square. The area 2 and 3 fall between two isoids each. Hence, these areas may be thought as thought of as corresponding to the following rainfall depths. Area 2 corresponds to 10 plus 15 by 2 is depth of rainfall is 12.5. 10, 10 plus 15, 25, 25 by 2 will be 12.5. Mm. Similarly, area 3 corresponds to 5 plus 10 equal to 15 divided by 7.5 rainfall depth. For area 1, we would ex expect rainfall to be more than 15 mm, but since there is no record, a rainfall depth of 15 mm is accepted. Similarly, for area 4, a rainfall depth of 5 mm has to be taken. So, area 1 depth of rainfall is 15 next for area 2 area is 80 into depth of rainfall is 
12.5 centimeter plus area 3 70 depth of employees 7.5 next area 4 50 depth of employees 5 divided by total area will be 240 kilometer square so average rainfall of that particular area is 9.85 mm next we will move to mass rainfall curve the mass curve of rainfall of a storm is graphically representation of the accumulated precipitation over time in hours precipitation along x axis sorry y axis and time along x axis you can see in the image the graph is plotted between the rainfall accumulation versus time this is used in calculating the catchment area of a particular depth of catchment area of a particular location next one is intensity duration curve an intensity duration frequency curve is a mathematical function that relates the intensity of an event with its duration and frequency of occurrence frequency is the inverse of the probability of occurrence the applications of idf curves range from assessing the rainfall events classifying the climatic regimes and deriving design storms and assisting in designing urban drainage thanks for your patience watching and these are the references referred for preparing this presentation thank you thank you